Hey, what's going on guys? Matt back here with another tutorial and today we're going to be looking at um, putting some context into our game. So let's um, show you what I'm talking about. We're going to remove our rigid body for now. Um, and what that means is, uh, well the reason for that is that I'm going to make Kel uh, a collectible item that's going to be like flying around and you've got to run around and collect them all, probably in some kind of time limit. Um, so, but for this episode, we're just going to be going around um, making Kel a collectible item where we can collect him and add to a score. Now, the score won't be shown on the screen yet, but it will be shown uh, probably in a couple of episodes' time. Um, I've got some plans. Uh, the next episode is going to be uh, making sure that Kel can't go through the walls, because obviously at the moment, you can go over the edges of the walls um, no problem at all and with removing the rigid body it's just going to fly on forever um, so we need it to be able to detect the walls so we'll do that in the next episode and the episode after that will be when we're adding a GUI to make it so we can see the score um, but for now we're going to be um, making our Kel object a collectible item so what we're going to do is inside our assets folder we're just going to drag Kel over um, and uh, just release there and if you've got uh, an older version of Unity, you can just drag it straight to the project panel rather than uh, inside the folder like I have there. Um, now, we also need to add an enemy tag. Now, it doesn't have to be enemy. You can tag it, you can call it whatever you want as long as you use the same tag later on. But I prefer to use enemy at the moment uh, because you almost every game has an enemy. Um, so, it's useful to have an enemy tag and to use an enemy tag as the the thing that you are attacking, collecting, hitting, whatever. Um, so our Kel object inside the project panel we're go uh, as the prefab because it's um, what we've just done by dragging it over is a quick way of going create prefab and then dragging our object onto it um, basically and so we're going to add our tag of enemy to there and what that does is it will add it to the one that's in the hierarchy as well um, so that makes that a little bit easier. Now something I have done off screen um, has simply changed uh, the speed of Kel move um, because it was a bit too fast for, for this idea. So I've changed it to divided by 6 rather than divided by 4. Um, and so that should tidy that up a bit. And also, um, we're going to need to change this script. So it's not changing anything we've already done. We're just going to be adding some more stuff to it. So what we're going to do is uh, make it so when we collide with Kel, we collect it and add a point. So we need to add something similar to this trigger but as a collision rather than a trigger so we're going to go on collision enter um, if the other collision, oh, collision. Um, um, if the other game object with a um, lowercase g and a uppercase o um, dot name not tag because you can't use tags in uh, on collisions from 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 my testing around with it you can't do it um, so you have to do it by the name of the actual object now what that means um, is actually adding the tag like we did before is kind of obsolete for now but it's going to be useful later on um, but um, for this we're just going to need to put the name of the object so for us it's going to be Kel um, for you it can be whatever you've called the the whatever we're going to pick up. Um, one thing to bear in mind is if you're going to change the game, so kind of like how we did the shooting, if, you, if you're if you going to make spawn points, um, you're going to have to call this Kel and then brackets clone like that. Uh, because if you instantiate the object from a script uh, within the game, uh, it'll have the name of clone inside it and that's what it, that's its name rather than the, uh, the blank like from the prefab here. Um, so bear that in mind if you're going to be using kind of spawn points or a way to create uh, within the game the object. And you can obviously just copy this so you can make it so you can delete the uh, ones that are there from the start, which are just Kel. Because, for example, if you have it so it's set up with ten exactly 10 players right at the start, uh, 10 enemies right at the start, uh, we could just drag them in, put them there, and they're all going to be called just Kel. And um, if we just press play, they're all going to move. Oops, let's have it not in full screen. Um, they're all going to move on their own, um, which is useful, yeah. But um, if you're going to instantiate them, then you're going to need to put clone. But for me, I'm just going to leave it like that. And uh, we also need to add a score variable. So we'll add that at the top here. Um, so we go there, score, and we'll put it as an integer, which is basically 
um, similar to a float, but it is just uh, a multiple of like one, so it's like one, two, three, four, five, um, a whole number. Whereas a float is a decimal, and you don't even for this one we're not going to put anything afterwards because it naturally puts it as zero, um, as stat for standard. So we're just going to leave it as that, and then here we're going to want to put score um, plus plus because what that does is it just adds one to the score, adds it, uh, increases it by one. So that's that bit done. We're also going to want to make it so we can delete that object. So we'll go destroy, just like we kind of did with the bullet, and then other uh, game object rather than um, how we did before. So it's uh, game yet again with a, a lowercase g and an uppercase o, by basically meaning the uh, collisions game object rather than if, if we had it as just game object, it would destroy our own game object, whereas the other one makes it so it's the one that we, the thing that we collided with so that way we won't destroy everything called Kel but we will destroy the only other one that we hit into um, and obviously if we, hit, if we hit into two at the same time then it will do the same um, so that's pretty much it for that I mean if we save that and give it a shot um, actually something something else I want to do just to just to make it a little bit easier is we'll add something to the debug log um, we'll just put score in there, um, and what that'll do is just c bring it up down here. Just say what the number of the score is. Um, so yeah, so we've saved that, and come into here. We hopefully won't jump off the edge, um, and I hit it, and so Kel's gone from here. It's added one down here in the debug log. And that has come from one within the score in the script of Joe. So if we kind of let's try it again with adding some more in to the scene. Um, in fact, we'll do it like this. So then it's they're, they're not kind of all over the place. Now, obviously, part of the game could be that we have some on top of things and we have to jump off of things to get to them. Little things like that, just to add some more kind of variety to it. Um, so if we kind of press play now, we can c jump and collect as many as we can. So we've got. All except one, and finding it hard to get him, and he's gone off the edge. So that's something we're going to have to fix. Um, but so we've got all but one, and it says three down on the debug, and also our Joe has got three on the score. So yeah, so thanks for watching, guys. Um, I know this is a short episode, but we're going to have some be pumping out these episodes quite quickly. So we've got this one, and we've got the walls one. Um, and then we'll have the gooey one. So hopefully that will be useful stuff for you guys. And I think. We might even, after that one, put in a kind of uh, start level, so you can kind of decide which game we could we could make it out of lots of little lots of little games. So we'll just have a a home page that you can an interactive one. Um, so yeah, so thanks for watching, guys, and uh, I'll see you next time.